to you from underneath a peach blossom It's time for an episode of Be Awesome Find positivity throughout your life and work Just like our mascot rooster, see the jerk Be Awesome listeners, this is episode 28 of the Be Awesome podcast. Super excited, still here in Raleigh, North Carolina at the Raleigh Convention Center. I got a unique opportunity to have a hostile takeover of my podcast by my day job at Dude Solutions CEO, Ed Rossich. Uh, he uh, got a chance to interview myself, uh, Lee Prevo, founder of Dude Solutions, my longtime 20 plus year friend of uh, uh, and boss, Scott Carpenter, Andy Townsend, who's worked with me for the last 15 years and Pat Buchanan, who we've worked together for the last 15 years, but known each other for almost 25. And uh, we just talked about the great journey that we've gone on, which I think is fairly unique. Uh, all of us have been part of a, a startup organization that was uh, unknown, a, a, known, a funny name company in the dot com, with a dot com at the end that was the, the dot bust. And uh, the odds were stacked against us, and we are here now, all these years later, with uh, at a convention with 1,100 of our clients, 660 employees, and uh, really grown to a, a top revenue company in the country. So, hope you guys like this. It's a unique one. I really appreciate it for stepping up and stepping in for me, and uh, let me know what you think. Have a great day. Welcome, Be Awesome, and Operate Intelligently listeners. We have taken over both podcasts here. I'm Ed Rossich, your host, uh, CEO of Dude Solutions. We're here live at the uh, somewhat palatial CEO suite at the Raleigh Convention Center with uh, 1,200 of our closest friends, uh, Dude University attendees. I have gathered a motley, motley um, mixed bag of... Uh, goofballs that have been here uh, with the dude uh, for a collective 86 years. We're going to have some fun, maybe going back through the, the memory banks and talking maybe a little bit about the future as well. I've got five of them here. I'm going to have them just so uh, you can connect voices with names, introduce themselves. We're going to start with the uh, notorious, famous, dressed in a button-up shirt for the first time maybe in his life. Mm-hmm. Silky smooth, twisted steel, and sex appeal. Josh Peach. <laughs> Welcome, Thank you very Josh. Much. <laughs> All right, uh, Pat Buchanan. Pat Buchanan, not to be con, uh, uh, confused with the conservative uh, Republican <laughs> presidential dude. Lee Prevo, founder, uh, co founder of the dude. We're excited to have him. Uh, Scott Carpenter. Uh, keeps Peach in line. <laughs> Andy Townsend. And Andy Townsend. Welcome, gentlemen. So, 20 years, uh, dude, birthday today. Um, what do you guys think it is? You, as you see where we've gone, uh, from where we came from, the, the over 1,000 attendees, any, any thoughts, anything going through your guys' mind? Maybe Lee would be uh, the best place to start. You know, my favorite part of the year is tonight when we, uh, you know, we welcome our clients into the general session and everybody, you know, there's all that yeah. fun and we, we have them waiting at the door and we're all standing there and we, we do our, our clapping and, you know, just a great time to honor uh, the people we serve. It's really cool, Ed. You know, we... we uh, our first one, we didn't have nearly this many. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, great, great event. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we didn't have this many clients. No, no. we didn't. It's no. amazing. Yeah, that's the, that is the most amazing thing, and it's been the the sea of claps has only gotten longer and larger. But that is one of the most energy driven experiences for the now upwards of ten minutes of seeing all of our attendees come in and saying thank you, all of us lined up and just clapping and. Waiting for them to take their seats and have a have a good send off for tomorrow. So. Oh, that's my favorite part. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So one of the things I have heard uh, at least a dozen times a day over the last couple of days is, "Wow, dude, people are are so passionate. They're they're great at servicing us. I feel like they're treating us uh, like family." That had to start early in the culture, and I know a couple of you guys have been around here for 20 years. My my general belief is that culture seed was planted on day one or day two of the company, you know, maybe Scott or, or, or Lee or somebody, you can talk, talk about how you guys kept that culture going to the point where we've got people approaching me today saying, 
Joe. Yeah, you guys yeah. love yeah. I, I would say, and I know Lee would agree, it probably happened a couple months later because we had to get some clients first before we could hire the head of CSC. And once we had got clients, uh, we hired Joan. And Joan was, you know, um, she taught us that it was not a customer but a client because yeah. a customer is somebody that does a transaction. A client is somebody that you stay with for life. Mm -hmm. And it's something that carried over with uh, our whole CSC, but not just CSC, our sales, every department in the company. It was whether you, you know, whoever you are, you pick up the phone when it rings and you help clients. When you're at Dude You, you take care of everybody. Um, it's just something that started from the very beginning and has transcended all these years. So it's, it's been great. Absolutely, yeah. And it's also it's been a big help. You know, you, the things that we do here really do help our clients. And so that makes it even more more of a pleasure to help our clients and to teach these classes and to do all the things that we do here at Duke University. That, that's cool. I mean, it, it just shows, I, like I said, I've, I've gotten approached at least a dozen times a day over the last couple of days. All right, really key question. I, I'll tell you one thing, and I'd add to it that I think it's transcendent because as, as the leadership has grown and changed, even with you, I think that the same um, key elements of uh, taking care of our clients, taking care of our, our employees, um, I think to be at a company that cares about its employees first, and then they care about their their um, their clients just as much. I think that is what keeps us going on and on and on. Yeah. Um, if you don't care about your employees, you don't care about your clients, then you're not going to keep that culture going. So I think you know, kudos to you and the the executive team for carrying that that on. Well, uh, good good role models and examples to follow for sure. So uh, I gotta ask, yeah, you know, we've got the dude mascot. When did that get introduced into into the? Uh, oh boy, I just stepped in a dog pile here. Uh, when did that get introduced? And then I gotta ask, who amongst us has worn the dude suit, or maybe who hasn't worn the dude suit? Yeah. Well, it was in my contract not to wear the dude suit. <laughs> I actually wore the dude suit in Hawaii. Yeah, you did. Oof. That was a tough. That was a tough. When sale. did when did uh, on the timeline when did that get introduced and what, what was the, the dude, thing there? The dude came at the very beginning. Yeah. And okay. Uh, I, I give Carsey Denning uh, all the credit. Carsey yeah. went to. Uh, I believe the name of it was Peppers, Peppers in, in Canada, which is the same company that designs all the Disney, you know, uh, uh, character outfits. And we, um, I believe the first time it was worn was uh, in a grocery store in, in Harnett County. Uh, <laughs> Carsey, Carsey wore it into the grocery store. Of course he did. And then one of the second times. Just for fun? Just yeah. for fun. Just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just for fun, and we have a picture of it. And then I think one of the second times, uh, Scott and I and a couple of others went out to um, the Moscone Center in California, mm -hmm. in oh San gosh. Francisco. We had one of our large uh, annual user, con or, I'm sorry, large uh, uh, superintendents conference where we we sort of debuted the, the, the dude. And uh, Car uh, Carsey's son, Garen. Uh, we, we all went out to dinner uh, the night before, and it was a garlic-themed dinner. Oh, no. Um, and, and so Garen wore the dude outfit, and he went up to this superintendent, and the superintendent's wife said, Wow, dude, you've been into the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would so, tell you the funniest story about the dude, and it involves Lee, because uh, I had told these guys I wasn't going to wear the suit because they made me be act man in the previous company. So <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do this. And so Lee actually got got in, we went to a, a uh, Alabama, and Lee goes, let's go on the beach, because it was at Orange Beach, he goes, let's go on the beach and get a picture of the dude, we're going to write dude in the sand and take a picture of it, well, we're walking by the pool, and these little, like, eight, ten-year-old kids start running up to Lee and going, who are you, who are you, are you Mario, and they started kicking and hitting him and everything, so Lee started pushing these little kids in the pool, <laughs> was something like 115 ambient, yeah, and, yeah. and it was like in July in yeah. the desert. So and the head fan never worked. Yeah. It did. Uh, that, that, that smelled so bad in there. Uh, it's like the head fan didn't work, and half the people never used the ice jacket, and so you'd get into it, and it'd just be... 
Yes. Yeah. So, well, af- after living in downtown San Francisco and, and just visualizing the dude mascot walking around, people probably wouldn't even notice. Like, it's so weird out there. But, uh, too funny. Well, tonight, you know, the dude will be walking around the, the clients tonight, and it's it just fascinates me, you know, the hugs, the high fives, the... The, uh, the handshakes, the pictures, you know, uh, clearly the dude mascot is something that people attach to, and, uh, you know, it's so cool. So, um, you, you guys have all been through, you know, a lot of wars together. Like, in the early days, was there ever any doubt? Like, you know, any doubt? And, and talk about that. Oh, man, another one. Yeah. Any doubt that we'd be sitting here early 20 years later? Early days, we had to help technology departments at schools actually trust software as a service mm. because it was new and they wanted to own it. Well, heck, that wasn't even a term people right. even knew yeah. about. They, right. you, know, you mean we don't have it on our servers and we're not controlling it? We didn't have the fancy names like cloud. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, we were explaining to them what cloud was so, uh, another before story. there was a name. Yeah, mm-hmm. Another story in Alabama, Lee and I went down there. This was like our second trade show. And we, you know, we were giving out trinkets and trash, and it was one of those, uh, it was like a little felt thing that you cleaned your uh, monitor or your computer screen 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 screen. Screen. And, uh So we had those giving them out, and this, this guy walks up, this maintenance guy walks up to Lee, and he, and he goes, hey, what's that? And Lee goes, oh, it's to clean your monitor and keep it clean. The guy goes, well... I don't have a monitor, but you think I could use it on my TV? <laughs> and Lee goes, oh, we might be too early. <laughs> yeah, so there was a little doubt. So one thing you need is a computer, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's, you started a dot .com and a dot .bust with a name like School Dude. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way you got any doubt in that. That's going to work. <laughs> that is so true. You know, we, you brought up uh, Joan's name, Scott, earlier, and you think, and there's been a, a, a stack of dudes that have made major impacts on this company. It, it, you throw a couple other names out there that you think, like, right person, right time, you know, whether it was an individual contributor or leader, that really moved the needle for the company through the years, you think? Um, there's a few of them in this room. I mean, yeah, you know, for sure. Pat Buchanan and Josh Peets and Andy Townsend, Lee Prebo. I mean, they're all... Um, you know, I've watched this company grow, and I've watched them grow. You know, uh, to see Josh um, giving these presentations now is, is uh, you know, to watch him from the first day. He told a story that, you know, I, uh, he told me, he goes, hey, i got to give these presentations in front of his neck, and he just don't put me in front of Kent. I said, well, I, I got your back. Don't worry about it. Well, I told Kent. Kent said he's coming to me. So, you know, he wanted Josh to, you know, to do his best, and, and um to see where he's come from there to here is just amazing. Pat, you know, people don't know this about Pat, but Pat did reports for the company. Um, he, he actually did our first SDR movement called Teledude. Teledude. Uh, he started our apps team and helped us grow it. Um, you know, Andy has owned Texas and made it um, just, you know, um, it's, it's one of our biggest revenue states. Um, it helped us cal- cal- you know, it gave us a big catalyst in the rest of the nation. And Lee, of course, you know, he's a founder and just. Well, I think about Lynn Boswell. You know, oh, Lynn. Yeah. Lynn uh, yeah. You know, Lynn brought us. Uh, first of all, Scott uh, came up with the name and a dream. Uh, our first product was Maintenance Direct, yeah. and he MD. comes into work and he says, "I had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we to name it MD Maintenance Direct." And Lynn delivered the uh, the dream. You yeah. know, she she delivered the uh, first. And it was kind of a big deal if you think about it. This was in 2001. She delivered a pure multi-tenant SaaS, you know, cloud application. And we didn't even know what those words meant. Yep. You know, <laughs> I still don't. But uh, she, you know, she did it. She did it and, uh, you know, built that out. Uh, I, I think about all of the uh, early sales leadership um, that was sitting in uh, Bob Bogardis' living yeah. room. Oh, and, yeah. In, uh, yeah. There on the cape, on the cape, and so you know all, all those folks. You know, I, I, I would hate to go through names because I'm afraid I'd miss some. Yeah, yeah. So 
this team, you know, again, uh, anywhere from 15, 14 years, 20 years, that's a long time in this day and age to stick with a company. Like when you think about what motivates you today, it's, uh, you know, when you, to get up out of bed and, you know, come to the same place, basically working on the same stuff. Like how do you get yourself revved up for that? It's a sense of purpose. Sense of purpose? Tell me about that. Like Pat said, you know, we're, we're selling to our friends and family. Yeah. You know, that's really how it feels. Oh, yeah. And you're doing something that they, you're providing something that they need. So it's easy to, to get up in the morning when you're mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah, there's so many examples where clients come up and say, hey, this product you, you give me is giving me my career. I've been able to wow. move from where I'm at today all the way to now I'm a director of operations. You know, I st- so many folks say, I started with a custodial. I was a, I was a custodial lead, and now I'm a director of maintenance for our facility. So so many of those stories that we hear here. Oh, yeah. I can remember when I first started, and I really didn't know anything other than, because we, we all came from the previous company, which, which was a client server, desktop version, you know, software program, and uh, the first, uh, experience I had was with Paul Dyer at Wentworth Institute of Technology in 2004 and he said hey you just gave me back a lot of time with, with my family and I was like what are you talking about he said well now I can go home a little bit earlier and beat the traffic and I can log into my account from my house and I can be home when my kids get off the bus and then I can go to work a little bit earlier and get my work done but I'm, I have this freedom and I have this but I still have that accessibility the work from anywhere I mean we had the work from anywhere back when we started and nobody else did so it, it you know that's that purpose and uh, it, it doesn't take work when you when you find something that you love and the people that you love that you work with and the people that you serve and that's that's what this is I mean it's very unique too too often I was out last night around town talked to a few people and People hate their jobs, and if you hate your jobs, it's going to go into your personal life. It's going to other things, and you just need to find what it is that you love. And we, I think, we've all been very lucky that we found a, a synergy that we love each other real, real quick and real easy, and we look out for one another. And that just makes all of this worth it and easy. And, and you, you don't, you wake up with purpose. It's, it's no work at all. It's just let's go. That's awesome. Any other great client stories where you maybe you, you, you change somebody's life or trajectory or or anything like that that you can think of around the table? The one that um, sticks out to me most, and it was early in my the dude career, I had a custodian walk up to me and say, thank you. And I said, why are you telling me thank you? He goes, well, he said, because now when I go home and I talk to my kids, I can talk to them about working on a computer because I order um, computer, I order custodial supplies and I do things on the computer. I don't go home and talk to them about cleaning the toilet. Mm. And he said, so, you know, my kids are on computers. Now I'm on a computer. I'm starting to learn this. It kind of, they made me do this, but I'm glad I did because now I have something in common with my kids and I'm proud to be able to talk about that versus, you know, cleaning the toilet. So it made a huge impact on me that, that this guy is looking at our software as something that changed his life to where he, with his kids, with his whole um, morale with this whole you know, esteem issues. I mean, it was just, you know, it changed the way I felt about this. It gives them greater confidence. They feel better. It's like, uh, you know, uh, Dick Wendell in, in uh, Exeter Public Schools in New Hampshire. I remember going into his office, which was in the basement of a building, and you'd walk in and it was just a mess cluttered with brooms and light bulbs and everything else. And went back in there, you know, fast forward six years later with, with, with the dude and uh, in 2004 and where all that stuff was were now workstations that looked like a computer lab. And so when people walked in there, you know, they didn't, they didn't think they were walking into a custodial closet. They, they thought they were walking into an, an operations office that was getting things done. And that perception, just the perception alone of the visual gave them much more clout in the district and much more notoriety as far as they know what they're doing. They're organized, they're professional, and, and we these, these are what we, you know, we know they're the unsung heroes. We just want them to get recognized for yeah. the great work that they do, yeah. and that's often overlooked. Mm-hmm. To, to a large degree, we've also helped a lot of our clients in their career path because as they go to other schools, their experience with school dude, excuse me, <clears throat> their experience with school dude at the time now dude solutions it was that they had experience using that system and our system was in so many places that now our clients are using that to connect with their next career move and also we've been a part of you know everyone in the room can tell you 
I connected so and so with their next job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, that they came to me and said, "Hey, do you know of any openings?" And it's like, we know pretty much all of them. So we're able to connect and create a pretty powerful network within just by them being users and understanding how to use our system. Mm -hmm. well, we used to post the job listings on the uh, community, community. Or my, well, my community, that community community. wonderful $200 resource, yeah. $200 a year resource, first year free. Yeah. But yeah, we used to post that people could do job postings right on there and thousands of people would be able to look and see and, That's and, awesome. and apply. Yeah. So it's so funny, you know, um, I, obviously the company's gone through a process and the announcement last week, but one of the things I kept bringing up that people just were like, what? But, you know, the, uh, our clients love what you guys have built so much. They're getting tattoos. They're writing songs. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's like a Harley Davidson type brand moment where, you know, they're, they're identifying with the dude. What, what do you think that's all about? What do you guys, what did you guys do? That created, you think, that sort of fervor and hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna ink my body up with the dude logo. Like, what is that? I think it goes right back to you know Lee's initial comment. I mean, our, our clients, the majority of them, don't get recognized like mm -hmm. they're gonna get recognized tonight on Tuesday yeah. night. They they don't they don't get that true sense of appreciation that that, that just shakes a building that says thank mm -hmm. you for giving us your four days and then going back and give us 361 more and. We, they, they know that we have that appreciation, that respect for them, that care, mm -hmm. and they probably don't get it in a lot of other places. They, and that's that, that commitment to it. Gary Musio, who does the songs, he's been doing songs for, mm -hmm. God, he's been doing oh, yeah. it forever. And I mean, he, he takes a lot of time doing that oh. stuff. And, uh, and Matt Bennett with the tattoo, I mean, he, he goes back, you know, 2003, and, and he's been to a couple of different districts, and, and he fights for us, and he, he, you know, he shows the reason, and he actually, no, before the tattoo, the tattoo he had he had t-shirts made on his own dime, he went him. and he, he went and had t-shirts, these red, red t-shirts with the dude logo on it, and said, if it's not in dude, it doesn't exist, and then on the back, it said, it'll change your life, and that's what his staff wow. wore every single day um, when they walked the halls, because they, they weren't allowed to get their staff to stop to do something unless they put it in the dude and, and that's you know that's that's when you go back to all of what we talk about which is you know we're making a difference in people's lives and when you do that and you show it then that commitment to, to us that they have is tattoo worthy and, and song worthy yeah well it's so funny you uh, you and I were out on a road show a couple months ago and you introduced me to him and uh, for the listeners we actually had a brand change uh, very shortly after he got the dude tattoo yes. with the old sort of mascot head and on it and and I was like, hey, uh, maybe we could make take up a Kickstarter collection for you, or maybe I can expense some laser removal. He just looks at me and goes, I got two arms, so I'll get the new one on the other one. Yeah, he was just like, yeah. all righty then. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, very cool. It's a humbling, magical, mystical thing. And, you know, I, I think that part of it is, um, you know, they they experience the software, they experience the, the client, you know, service, they, they experience our our uh, very knowledgeable, you know, go-to-market organization over the phone, but then they come here and they meet us and they get to know us and they and they see, wow, you know, the, these guys, are, these these ladies and gentlemen have our back, yeah. you know, and I think they they really see in the in in this event that. Uh, it's more than just about software. You know, it's about uh, professional development, earning respect, going back, getting credit for what you're doing. Josh, you mentioned the gap, you know, the whole perception gap. Yeah. So uh, I think I think this event, Ed, is, is really where a lot of our um, clients, but also our employees, start to really get it mm -hmm. and yeah. understand the whole brand. Yeah, I always tell anybody that just starts with a company, you never understand what we do until you come to Dude University. Never. Yep, it's infectious. Uh, this is my second one, and you know, the first one I didn't know what quite to expect. And I was, uh, you know, been to conference, user conferences for years with other companies, and I've never seen anything. You know, it's a hug fest, high five fest. You know, uh, great networking, great education. Just uh, almost, I hate to use the word cultish, but it, it really feels, you know, in a good way, like a tribe, and and all that. Uh, back to uh, sort of the milestones. And hallmarks of success. When you guys think back through, was there any one pivotal moment where it's like, "Holy sugar cookies! Wow, we just nailed it!" And this is going to launch us. Any any sort of 
you know, view or maybe that tipping point sense? Was there any anything like that in, in the history here that you could uh, share? Yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I would think the first one that I that I remember was Lee and I went to ASBO, and we've been answering everybody's question, which is the Association of School Business Officials, and we've been answering everybody's question about school dude, the dude, what is the dude, and you're going to keep my data, and you know all these questions that were coming up at the time because you know the cloud wasn't popular at that point, and and we went to this conference and. Uh, we started talking to people and we said, hey, we're new, we'd like to get going and we met a lady named Janet and Janet took us under her wing and she helped us and, and uh, the next year we went back to that show and we had five speaking engagements and we, we came home with like, uh, I don't know, 220 leads and we realized that it was like, um, you know, we were probably six months too early the first time but then when we went back, um, it was, I mean, everybody wanted it. Everybody knew who the dude was. Um, so I, I think that was a, a, to me, it was a pivotal point knowing that this business was going to make it. That's awesome. I think about some of the early state wins. You know, those were big, uh, big moments. The DOD, yeah. you know, was when the uh, Department of yeah. Defense uh, standardized on us. Um, I think about Scott Little up in Michigan, ASBO, where he had uh, almost like a, a you know head-to-head -head duel among you know three, three or four companies, and and our our clients you know overwhelmingly um, had our back. You know, they were our early clients stood up and said, "No, it's the dude. You want some of that dude.com stuff?" You know, <laughs> that, that also happened in Texas. But it was yeah. it was a lot of little things, Ed, that that yeah. were that. Uh, yeah, it Those was moments. that early on time, you know, all, you have all these companies that start up now, and some of them sit and, and tell, oh, you know, you got to fake it till you make it, you got to fake it till you make it, and we didn't do that. You guys, leadership, for, for us that were, you know, selling it on the ground floor every day, you know, we were 10 foot tall and bulletproof. That's what they just told us, you know, re recognize, acknowledge, people ask you a question, get the answers for them, take care of them, do all those things. We're, we're due, you know, 10 foot tall and bulletproof. You just tell yourself that every day. And, and you walk into a room with confidence and say, you might not know us now, but you're going to know us by the time we leave. And that was, you know, one, it was one thing, it was one, one account, one, one handshake, one hug at a time. And then all of a sudden, when you look back, you know, and this has been a lot of reminiscing, but you kind of look back at it and you go, wow, we, we did this. Like this, like we're looking down on the glass right now. I mean, how many conferences that you go to that you have with seats for a thousand and they're, the tables are empty and it's the people are waiting outside. It's in a loading dock. Right, and it's in yeah. a loading dock and, it's, and it was 6.40 in the morning and people were outside waiting to get in because the doors were locked. People can't <laughs> wait to be here. And, you know, this, is, this was one account at a time, you know, one person at a time. And that's... We had, we had like 20,000, what was it, in 2004, we had what, like 25,000 unique logins, <laughs> and now we got like 3.5 million. It's crazy. Like, you, just, you just start looking at the numbers, and it's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. it's our clients. You know, they, they've accepted what we're offering, they appreciate how we do it, and they're telling the guy next to them. Yeah. And they're telling the, you know, their, their peer yep. at the next place. <coughs> and there's trust that, you know, there's trust that we don't have anything to do with other than we've treated this one client right. And they're telling all their friends. I would say also the fact that we were able to get all of these great employees that we got <coughs> early on. Um, we were lucky that there was a company that wasn't as very smart and they let a lot of people go and these were talented great people and uh, the dude probably couldn't afford them at the time but because they were so great we couldn't afford not to let them come and be part of it and once that happened it just it just changed the whole dynamics and, and really made us take off oh, that, so we have a lot of great people that's awesome. So we, we've talked a lot about success and positive things, uh, and this is sort of can be one of those as well. But like, if, if the team had like one thing that seemed like a good idea at the time, as Kent would say, um, that you'd love to take back, you know, sort of a mulligan or a yo-yo, like oh, what were we well intended, but what the hell were we thinking in retrospect? What was that? Uh, <laughs> launching her uh, trip direct like three days after Hurricane Katrina, I think, was probably one. Um, we had that field trip product. And it was, I mean, you can't control when you put something out, but it was like three days before, three days after Katrina came. So, phenomenal solution, but it all revolves around school bus 
planning. And you know, after the hurricane hit, the state of Georgia went to a four-day uh, school week because they were trying to conserve fuel and everything. So selling people on you know school bus management was a little bit of a challenge <laughs> and getting excited. Um, but that wasn't that's just timing and mother nature. Any any other mulligans you would you think about now that seemed like a good idea at the time? We did a launch. Um, I won't say what the launch was, but I still have a box of cups, green cups. I don't know, a thousand in my garage that we were going to hand out. <laughs> that we rethought that, <laughs> but they still sit in my garage. Oh, oh come I on, you can't leave that dang one. I tried to send them back to lead. <laughs> You can't but, leave that dangling out there. Come on, what was you got at least send us the cops. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was a launch. We were trying to, to kind of rebrand ourselves in the higher ed market. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we had a yes. oh, yeah. we, oh, we had yeah, a trade yeah. show yeah. that yeah. we were doing popcorn and we were going to put it in these cups yeah. to, to hand out. Great. Right. Yeah. And so what was wrong with well, that? Well, we idea? did that one trade show and I had all these cups left over and we kind of had decided that that w- that wasn't the right move at the right time. <laughs> the name, so, the higher ed name didn't get yeah. It didn't evolve. Okay, so come on, I still, guys. I still have those cups in my garage. These are old days. We, all, we, we may need Lee. I think Lee has to finish this. <laughs> I want one of the cups. Yeah. Come on, Lee. You, you know, have we, 100 cups. We, we, uh, we, we did um, have some, some thoughts about rebranding the company. I think we're going to call it College Dude or, right. you know, not, not rebrand the company, but, but create another brand, mm-hmm. right? Create a separate brand. And, you know, so we had this, this notion of multiple, you know, vertical names. But we didn't quite think that all the way through. We didn't, it, it, you know, that, that was, uh, you know, one of the ones that just didn't, didn't happen the way we thought, right? Yeah, yeah. But it seemed like the right thing at the time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Interesting. So I'm going to have to get that one offline because you guys are steering <laughs> wide around the iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, yes, we, we got a few more minutes here. Um, uh, give me some of your best stories. Maybe throw, you know, Peach, uh, being Peach, I'm sure he's got a swirl of great stories about him, with him. Anybody got a good Peach story? <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> Not that I want to tell here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if those are all podcast worthy. <laughs> those are all podcast. Oh, we can keep it PG, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I'll tell one because I don't care. <laughs> I think it's funny. Uh, we, well, early on, well, up until recently, we were we would room together. Like, didn't matter who you were in the company, you always you doubled up your startup. And so we were at the the, the sprint. Um, we were initially uh, Nextel. We had a partnership with them going back 2004, 2005. We had like maybe 35 employees, and I was I roomed with Ken. Ken okay. flew out and. So we were at the World Marriott in Orlando, and uh, so there I am, the CEO's in one bed, there's a nightstand, and then there's me in the other bed, and the alarm goes off, and I wake up, and I just look over, and I just didn't want to get up out of bed. Initially, that was my thoughts. I looked at Ken, and I'm like, you're the CEO of the company. You get first shower, and his eyes lit up like it was like the greatest thing to start the day off, you know, that, that respect of the first shower. So he gets in. Takes, starts to take a shower and I start to close my eyes and then I see on the nightstand is this flip phone dating myself and how far back this goes. I'm like, huh, I think I'll start calling all the employees from Kent's phone and firing them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I proceeded to go through the entire directory of employees and fire them. You just call them and be like, yeah, hey, this is Kent. We're, we're probably not going to need you anymore. Um, we're good. Oh and so gosh. I hang up. And I'm hanging up on one of the last calls, which was the car, and Ken comes out and he goes, well, oh, I think I'm going to need to get some HR a little bit earlier than I thought. And he didn't realize how many or who I called, so he called Carp back uh, for something else, and Carp Stances goes, you can't fire me. And Ken says, I can, and I will if you keep talking to me like that, because he had no idea. So, um, Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was good. And then the other good one that, that's with these guys is can't believe that. Scott and Lee. Scott and Lee were bunked up and at the uh, at, at a hotel in and it was like it was it was literally a closet in Boston, and uh, so I, they came out and saw me. We did some onsites, and I was driving them to this to this conference, and uh, I was dropping them off, and they said, "Hey, why don't you stick around? You know, why don't you stay in town and you know hang out with us and go to this event?" And I was like, "Yeah, I don't have a hotel room," and at the time, Carpenter was like, 
like his last name should have been Hilton. Like he had massive status with the Hilton hotels. So he's like, I'll get you a room at the Hilton. So he calls up, special hotline, gets me a room, and it was a crazy weekend. So I go to these guys' rooms, and they're literally on top of each other. Like, their nightstand is about four inches wide. And uh, I go to check into my room at the Hilton, and uh, under Scott Carpenter's name, and they had me in, like, the, the vice presidential suite, because the presidential suite with robes and all this stuff. And so I made the best of it, and he comes over the next day, and he walks in, and the person behind the desk says, good morning, Mr. Carpenter. And I grab him like that. I'm like, no, he's talking to me. He's like, good morning, I'm good. And so I was, I was Scott V. Carpenter for a couple of days, and it was, uh, it was a good life. So uh, no, and I didn't offer to give the room to either of them because it was too nice. Oh, that's too good. Any other cool stories? I remember one. Um, you know, w one of the things that this team just mastered was was uh, working within a trade within an, a, an association, mm -hmm. right? This team just had a great playbook where we would go in and we would, you know, really become um, a big part of the organization. We would contribute. We would speak. We would uh, become, you know, good friends with the organization and officers. And we just had this very well defined playbook. And I was with Kim Wool down in Florida, and we were at the uh, Florida, we were just checking into the hotel, the Florida ASBO conference, and it was the first time we'd ever been to Florida ASBO. So we knew no one. And so we, we walk into the room and we start executing our playbook, you know, and we, we start uh, trying to find, you know, kind of the, um, the, uh, the, the, the person, you know, that, that a lot of people are hanging around and we started trying to meet them and we introduce ourselves and, and sure enough that, that person introduces us to four or five others and finally, you know, we, we get to know most of the people in the room and about um, maybe, maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes in, we start thinking something is just a little bit odd. You know, something is just off. We, we're 45 minutes into this thing, and we're not even at Florida ASBO. We're at another. We're at an insurance conference, and it's like the, oh it's like the state insurance, uh, you know, um, organization. And Kim and I look at each other, and we just laughed. We just cracked up at ourselves because we had, we'd wasted this 45 minutes. Oh, but, that's funny. And we were working our way into the insurance organization. Had nothing to do with us. That's too good. Well, we're going to start wrapping down here. Um, I want to ask one serious question as we walk out uh, as we walk out from this podcast and you know my hope is all of you um, have a great future career continued future career with the dude but if you could think about a few things you want for the dude and, and pick anything it could be about the people the product or success like what do you hope happens with us over the next 10 years well I'd like to say I Hope we continue to have the great leadership that we have, the, the caring for our employees, and keep innovating the way we've done over the, the first 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the hardest thing, and I remember driving with Lee probably 12 or 10 or 12 years ago, and we were we were starting to we were starting to ramp up on growth, and ramping on, up on growth back then was like adding 10 people, but um, when you double in size, even in that case. You know, it's it's hard to um, it's really hard to see that so many people embrace the culture. And I remember saying to Lee, you know, thank you for building such a great culture with the company. And and I remember him saying to me, well, we started it. You know, Kent, Lynn, Lynn Joan, um, Scott, and I. You know, we started it. And we built the foundation, but it's up to you to continue it. And you know, my hope is that. You know, as we grow 660 dudes, and as we grow, you know, 10 years from now, it'll probably be 5,000 dudes. And the hope is, is that we can keep what Lee told me, which is make sure that everybody understands that they're part of the culture and they're what develops the culture and keeps the culture. And just hope that 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 people aspect is keep kept through the through all the growth that we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, total global domination. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of the galaxy. If, if Elon Musk can build us a yeah, place yeah, on yeah, Mars, yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. be on Mars. Yeah. I want to be the first facility and asset management product yeah. on Mars. Other other ten year thoughts, guys. Any any others out there? You know, um, I, I started with uh, something with DSI. Do something incredible, and and I think that this team has done something incredible. Um, amazingly, you know, all the acronyms you could use for it. And um, I just I hope that that continues. 
Um, as Josh said, you know, keep the culture. As Pat said, um, continue to take care of our clients and and, uh, and our employees. And and I know with your leadership, Ed, I know that'll happen. So that that's what I look forward to, though, continuing to do something incredible and changing people's lives, whether it's within the company or our clients. Mm -hmm. Nicely said. Yeah, I'll just add, uh, or not add, but just echo impact like Scott's talking about. Is that, That's something I've, I've always been the most proud about is the uh, what we enable. You know, the, like we used to measure it. You know, we used to kind of count down our, our path to making a billion-dollar impact, and, and somehow we've, we've way surpassed that. So it's keep on making that impact, and, and I have no, no doubt, Ed, that we're going to we're gonna uh, we're well on our way to that uh, you know that 300 million you know we're we're uh, only uh, we've only scratched the surface. Yeah, I believe that absolutely. Well, thank you, uh, gents, for the contributions you've made uh, through the years, the sacrifices you and your families have made. I, I thank our clients for for placing the trust in us uh, through the years and the trust they'll continue to place. And then I also thank the 660 dudes or, or maybe the, the prior dudes before the 660 uh, for all the work that they, they do on behalf of our clients. So with that, uh, we'll wrap it up here and uh, join the rest of Dude U. Thanks. Good day, good day guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.